Hi there, this is Rob at Reason101.net and I'm here continuing a series of tutorials that I'm doing on uh, different crossfading techniques inside Thor. And uh, last time we checked I was crossfading between two, um, two filters. I sent two oscillators into filter 1 and filter 2 down here and then I'm scaling it via this uh, road ringer. Now one trick that I was going to show in the last tutorial but I just decided against it and I said okay I'll wait till another tutorial and I'll do a whole new tutorial on this. But in reality it's not a huge trick so I'm just going to show it to you. Um, it's a way that you can use the LFO to modulate your um, your knob here and your crossfade with the filters. Now you can't really do it down here or at least you probably could but it's a little cumbersome so the easiest way to do this is just flip around to the back of the rack send LFO2 to control rotary 1 and then you can set rotary 1 all the way up now what this does is it basically will use this rotary use this LFO to affect this rotary all within Thor so when you play now when you play something on the keyboard that's what it sounds like it's kind of a nice technique. So that's how you apply an LFO to modulate these crossfaded filters. Okay, so with that being done, um, the only caveat to this though is that it doesn't save along with your Thor patch, so you'll have to connect it up every time you want to do this. So that's just one other method that you can use when you're crossfading filters. The other thing that I like about this whole crossfading filter technique is that um, it solves one of the problems that has been inherent in Thor since the beginning of Thor. And that is that you cannot modulate these envelope knobs. Now, I don't know why you can't do that, but the destination, when you look under the filters, there's no envelope amount or envelope knob or envelope gain there's nothing like that in here you can do it inside a combinator so if you did combine it and then you looked inside the combinator you could take the Thor and then you could see that you could go into the filter and you'll see that there is a filter one envelope amount envelope invert you can do all this wonderful envelope stuff inside a combinator but let's just say for the sake of argument we are not in the combinator. We want to do everything from within Thor. So one of the things that you can do is you can take this formant filter and I'm going to use just the formant filter. I'm going to take two instances of it. I'm going to set these up so that they're exactly the same. So this is uh, 2134. So we'll set this up to be 21. Come on. 21 and 34. Okay, so these are set up the same. Now the gender, I'm going to set that up to be the same as well. So that's 82. And the envelope is lowered here. These are in the default positions. 47, 47, 0, 0. Okay, and these are both set to 64. Now, what you're going to do is on one of them, you're going to have the envelope button or the envelope knob all the way down to 0. On the other one, you're going to turn the envelope all the way up to 127. And now when you crossfade through these, what you're doing is you're basically crossfading between um, the exact same filter, but one of the filters has zero envelope amount, and the other filter has a total envelope amount. And this has the effect of increasing your envelope um, using this knob here. So this now becomes an envelope amount knob. And when you use it, and you can just play around with the envelope settings a little bit. Uh, let's see. And this has the same effect. You can do it with a low pass. Let's just do it. Let's just turn this up a little so that that's at the default. We'll turn that at the default. We'll turn this at the default, except one has the envelope pushed all the way up, the other one has the envelope pushed all the way down. And let's hear it without this oscillator. So you're just hearing one oscillator going through these filters. 
So this now acts as your envelope amount. And that's a way that you can get around um, trying to figure out how to access this envelope knob. Now the downside to it, of course, is that you have to use two filter slots um, for it and you have to use a little bit of uh, modulation programming to get it working right. But if you have something that's a pretty basic, simple synth setup, this is a, a definitely an easier way to access the envelope knob than by going through a combinator because you're not using that extra device. So I hope you find this tutorial useful and uh, come visit me at reason101.net and I will keep giving you more tutorials. Thanks for watching.